Hey, welcome to Haphazard Homestead. Well, it finally started raining here again, so there are fungus among us. I like to eat mushrooms, including wild mushrooms. There are a couple of patches of mushrooms that come up every fall here at Haphazard Homestead, so I thought you might enjoy playing a little game that I call... Will I eat this or not? Here's how the game goes. I'm going to show you some key features of these mushrooms. This will allow you to mull over the question, Will I eat this or not? Then I'll go through the steps and thought process that I'm using to identify the mushroom and decide, Will I eat this or not? So let's take a look at these mushrooms up close and personal. <sighs> We're going to take a look at this, All right? We're just going to start off by going down into the ground to try to find the base of the mushroom. We always want to get the base. Here's some things we're looking for. We've got the base of the mushroom. We can see that there's a ring on the mushroom. That ring is attached at the top. We can see that the gills on this are pink. And look at this. Wherever I'm touching it and bruising it, look how right quick it started staining yellow. Right? Those are some key features. The cap is very smooth and dry. There's another one. See? It's got this veil right here. Around the base. It's not coming up from the base around all the way to here. It's coming up from the stem. Another feature that's going to be important for this mushroom, see how this stem doesn't go straight down? It has kind of a little hook here. Look at this one. It's opened up. It's pinkish. Look at this veil. It's all cottony. This one I'll just use my knife and go straight up the stem. Cut the whole thing directly in half. Can you see that where the gills are free? They aren't attached to the stem at all. That stem and the gills are completely separate from each other. They don't attach here, they don't attach down here. I mean, this is a young one, so the color of its spores can't be told by this. It needs to be told by an older mushroom. So let's take a look at this one here. Same business. It's got the stalk that's a little bent. But look how this has turned brown. The gills are very close together. Spores are brown, see how that? The spores are coming off. It's very brown. The flesh is pure white. The stalk separates from the cap pretty well. It didn't rip apart the gills. See that? It breaks off from the top pretty easily. So what I'm going to do is just put some of these in my basket. I don't want to put a mushroom in a plastic bag. They start to go bad. I'll take this one, take this one that I cut, put it just gently in there. None of these look bruised anymore, do they? Right now, I'm just going to put this over this. In case I find any more, then I can set them right on top. So, while I'm picking some more mushrooms from this second patch in the open grass, I think about all these features, and I confirm that these mushrooms have the same characteristics. So, there are the clues. You can stop the video here and leave me a comment below if you want about what you think this mushroom is and... Will I eat this or not? I'm going to head back to the house and then show how I decide... Will I eat this or not? All right, here we are now with our basket. We're going to come in and take a closer look at these mushrooms and see what we've got. I could go and just look around on the internet, picture after picture after picture. That is an inefficient way to go. It is over an overwhelming way to go. So I'm gonna go through this using a couple of different keys, that is some tools that help us make choices between one option or another and work out what kind of mushroom this is. For my first key, I'm gonna use this book, All That the Rain Promises and More by David Aurora. I got this years ago when I lived in Michigan, even though it is for Western mushrooms. It's a great book. I'll do a full review on that sometime in the future. But here's what we're going to go by. By using this key, we can work out what general group 
of mushrooms that we've got just by making choices on a limited amount of information for each choice. That's what's nice about a key. So the first one is do we have gills or not? All right. Do we have gills or not? We've got gills. If we don't have gills, there's a whole other group of mushrooms in the back cover, but here on the front cover are all about mushrooms with gills. We have gills, so we move over here. Now, what about our gills? If the mature gills are white, pinkish, or yellow, that is, not brown or black, then we have the, and some other characteristics, then we have the amanitas. But if our mature gills are brown or black, then we go down here and we've got two more choices. Obviously, our mature gills, look at that, are brown, a deep chocolate brown, a beautiful chocolate brown. Then we have two choices to make. If there's no veil that covers the young gills, or if the veil disappears and does not form a ring on the stalk. And the other choice is, are the young gills covered by a veil that makes a ring on the stalk? Well, let's take a look. The young gills are clearly covered by a veil. The veil does not form from a cup down below, which would be an amanita right here, but the veil starts from here. When that opens up, when that cap opens up, then that veil becomes a ring. See the ring right here. In this case, it's a very cottony ring. The young gills are covered by a veil, and it forms a ring on the stalk. So we come down into this choice. Here we go. If the spores are chocolate brown, and the mature gills are chocolate brown, a deep chocolate brown, but they can be white or pink when young, and the gills are free from the stalk, we have agaricus. If that's not true, then we're something else. But let's take a look. We've already determined the spores are a nice deep chocolate brown, and the gills themselves are a nice dark brown. And then, are the gills attached to the stalk or are they free from the stalk? We saw this out in the field. The gills are not attached at all to the, to the stalk. See that? The gills are not attached to the stalk at all. They're free from the stalk. So what do we have? First, gills. Then we've got brown gills, brown spores. We've got a veil, but it leaves a ring around the stalk. That means we've got agaricus. Now look, there's 20 pages of agaricus. So I'm not just going to go to page 100 and then start flipping through and looking at all the agaricus. There's just too much information. So we'll go to another key. I like using a key for agaricus that covers central California. It works well in my area here in the Willamette Valley west of the Cascades in Oregon. The big choice is, number one, does the color of the cap change when it's injured? This is so cool. What's happening there? Can you see it? Do you see it? Do you see it? Can you see it? Can you see that? Watch this. How about that? Haphazard Homestead. That changed to yellow. That changed fast to yellow. So the first choice in our key is, does the color of the cap change when it's injured? Yes or no? It's obviously yes. The second choice is, is that color reddish or yellowish? This is clearly yellowish. And then our next choice is, does the color change rapidly and then fade? Or does the color change slowly and persist? Here's one I did earlier. This one was as yellow as that one. Clearly the color has faded. You can see that the color is still a little bit brown. It didn't completely fade back to white. If I re-injure this, it's just gonna go right back to yellow and then it will fade too, but it fades to brown. With all this, the California Key gives us a choice of four in this category. Agaricus xanthodermis, Agaricus californicus, Agaricus hondensis, and Agaricus praeclerosquamosis. How about that? That's a mouthful. You can already see that one starting to fade off a little bit. So now I can go from the California Key back to this book, and go to these four. When it gets down into these details, keys may look a little different. And in fact, the keys differ a little bit between these four species, Californicus, Hodensis, Xanthodermis, and Praeclerosquamosis. But all four of them are part of the Lose Your Lunch Bunch. They won't kill me if I eat them, but they'll make me sick. So, oh. will I eat this or not? No, I will not. So am I disappointed that I can't eat this? Well, I don't feel like I can eat everything, but I can sure appreciate it. Look at that. Look how cool that is. And even though I can't eat this mushroom, I know that it's being good for my soil. It's helping make a lot of nutrients available for the trees and the grass. If you found this interesting or would like to know more about using a key to identify plants or mushrooms, let me know, because there's a lot to go into when it comes to keys. I'll be posting a bonus video 
that shows how I figure out what kind of the four lose-your-lunch bunch these mushrooms are. In the meantime, let me know what kind you think they are in the comments below. I hope things are going well at your place. Feel free to share this video with your friends. And if you haven't already, I hope you'll subscribe to my channel for maybe a little different perspective about living close to the land. Thanks for watching. Bye. Look at that. That's beautiful.